Okay, so in this lecture, we are uh, going to define uh, something called as centralizer of an element A in the group G. So let G star be a group and let A be some element in G. So I'm fixing A, okay? Let me write here, it is a fixed element in G. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take set of all those elements in G, all X in G, such that A star X must be equal to X star A. And this set I'm going to call as C of A which is the centralizer of A in G. This set is called as centralizer of A in G, okay? Now this set C of A, what is what it is actually containing? Let me show you one small picture. So let G be a group. And I'm taking an element A. And what am I collecting? I'm collecting all those people. This set I'm going to call C of A. In this set C of A, I'm going to put all such people which commute with A. Means X star A and A star X should be the same. For example, if you calculate what is a star e it is going to be a and if you calculate e star a that is also going to be a this means that identity star a is equal to a star identity means identity commutes with a means a star e is equal to e star e. So identity will be the member of that set, okay? If you also see that a also commutes with one other element, who is that other element? That element is a itself, okay? So we know that a star a is equal to a star a. So this is also a square and this is also Yes, so A also will go inside that set. A cannot remain outside that set. Suppose I come to know that A star B is coming different from B star A. Suppose I come with this case. Right? Then in this case, B will not become element of C of A. But suppose if you get C commutes with A, means C star A is equal to A star C. Suppose C commutes with A, then C will be contained inside, okay? This is the way I will start collecting. I will look at each element of group. I will go to each element of group and check, does that element X commute with A? Suppose it commutes, I will put it inside this set. Suppose it does not commute, suppose Y does not commute with A, then I will not put Y inside that set. And I will, I will collect all such elements. And that set will be called as centralizer of A in the group G. It means it is the collection of all those X where X commutes with G. Collection of all X such that X commutes with G, okay? It is very, very clear that if my original group is abelian, suppose the group is abelian, then what will happen? Then 
a star anything will be equal to the same thing star a because in abelian group alpha star beta will always be equal to beta star alpha so if the group is abelian then what will happen all the elements will commute with a and all the elements will go inside the set ca and in that case it will turn out that this set ca is actually nothing but it is the full group because everybody will commute with every other element this means every element will also commute with a and therefore all these elements will start going going inside the set ca and slowly slowly ca will start becoming bigger and bigger and it will finally become full group so ca will become the complete group if what if the group is a abelian group so this means that if i want to find the centralizer of a in a group g which is abelian i don't have to do anything i just have to say that since the group is abelian the set ca will be equal to g so this definition will actually make sense if the group is not an abelian group if the group is not an abelian group this means that ca will then become a subset of g as i'm showing in the figure ca will become because all the elements will not commute with a there will be some elements which do not commute with a the, those people will be kept outside and in that case ca will become a subset of g so the definition of centralizer of a in g will really be useful or it will make sense if the group is a non abelian group if the group is abelian group then ca set will just become the full group g itself okay now what we are trying to show in this in this lecture is that this ca is just not a subset it is not just a collection of some people but we will prove that this element this set ca actually forms a subgroup of g means this ca is a smaller group in itself what are what is ca containing of all elements with commute with a so if i take any two elements here a and say suppose i take alpha and beta then i will prove that alpha star beta is also in ca means this is closed it has identity it has inverse it has associativity everything will be there okay but we know that if i want to show that it is a subgroup i really don't need to check what i really don't need to check the associativity part so in the upcoming theorem now what i will prove is that ca is just not a sub subset of the group but ca is actually a subgroup of g so this sent ca which is centralizer of a in the group g is a subgroup of g so we will start checking the three things you have subgroup criteria with you also but i will prefer to use the three points closure identity and inverse so let alpha and beta belong to ca as soon as alpha and beta belong to ca this means alpha will commute with a and beta will also commute with a so alpha star a is equal to a star alpha and beta star a is equal to a star beta okay now what i will do is i will start with my left hand side what is my left hand side my left hand side is i will write alpha star beta star a by associativity i can write it as alpha star beta star a but beta star a can be replaced by a star beta from here so this is alpha star a star beta again by associativity i will flip the bracket sign i will make it alpha star a star beta and i know that alpha star a is equal to a star alpha because alpha is also in the ca and therefore i will write this as a star alpha star beta by by associativity so this will become my 
right hand side what is the left hand side and what is the right hand side left hand side says that alpha star a is equal to a star i'm sorry the left hand side is alpha star beta with a is same as a star alpha star beta and this means that alpha star beta also commutes with a right so lhs equal to rhs is giving me what it means that alpha star beta commutes with a and which is same thing to see that therefore alpha star beta will now become a member of what it will become the member of ca okay wherever alpha beta alpha beta will also in ca and now alpha star beta is also in ca this means our closure clearly holds is the identity inside ca yes because identity star a is always equal to a star identity so identity commutes with a and therefore identity also becomes a member of ca so identity is in the set ca now we have to go for inverse so let let alpha belong to ca okay i'm taking an element alpha in ca and i want to show that alpha inverse is also in ca okay why does alpha inverse exist first of all because alpha is an element of ca and ca is the subset of what ca is subset of g therefore alpha is in group therefore since alpha is in group alpha inverse will exist right so alpha inverse clearly exists but what is important for us i just don't want alpha inverse exists in g i want alpha inverse to be a member of ca okay means i will say that inverse of alpha also exists in that set okay that is the meaning of the uh, third part so since alpha belongs to c of a this means that a star alpha is equal to alpha star a okay and what i have to show that let me write again i have to show that a star alpha inverse is equal to alpha inverse star since alpha a star alpha is equal to alpha star a i will now write identity star a star alpha is equal to alpha star a star identity right this identity i am going to replace by what alpha star alpha inverse star a star alpha and this identity the identity on the right hand side I'm going to replace it by what? I'm going to replace it by alpha inverse star alpha. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to use associativity. What will I get? Alpha star alpha inverse star a star alpha is equal to alpha star a star alpha inverse star alpha. Therefore, on the left hand side we have this alpha and this alpha which can be cancelled by using left cancellation law and this alpha will cancel this alpha which is on the right hand side by using the right cancellation law and therefore what is remaining with us is that alpha inverse star alpha a is equal to a star alpha inverse and this equivalently means that alpha inverse commutes with a and this means that this alpha inverse will now become a member of c of a so in so alpha was in c of a and the inverse exists in the group but that inverse is not lying anywhere in the group but that inverse is also inside the set c a and this is the reason c a is now a subgroup of the group g 
So one thing that we can note here is that suppose G is abelian. If G is abelian, then we know that all elements commute with each other. And this means that X star A will be equal to A star X. This will be true for all X in the group G. And in that case, the centralized CA will be equal to the complete group G. So the centralizer of A in G will be a useful definition if G will be a abelian group. If G is not, if, I'm sorry, if G is a non-abelian group. If G is abelian group, then centralizer of A will be the same as the full group and then it won't be with any special property. But uh, if the group is non-abelian, then centralizer of A will be some smaller set inside a G, which will be a subgroup of G.